How do I stay focused in my work while not getting to pointless fields with people I never met? I know. Politics. Politics. Ooh, kitty. <laughs> oh, he's never going to catch that mouse. Politics. Politics. What's that? Gels are dead, and anybody using them is a stupid hack? RGB is the future? Okay. Thanks for the next video idea, pal. I'm going to light my next video only using gels. It's going to take me a whole five minutes. And you are the hack. Okay. Okay. Okay, that took forever to film. Hello, I'm Andre Correa, and this is Andre Correa Now, a show about the art of filmmaking, the craft behind it, and the technologies that make it all possible. Friends, one of the greatest benefits of being a covert narcissist residing in a bubble completely detached from reality is that I'm never wrong. So even I was surprised when I found many practical and creative uses for RGB lights, a product that I originally discounted as a um, gimmicky toilet-like gas grab. But wrong I was, and as penance, I am going to light the next scene using only two types of RGB lights from Aperture, the Aperture B7C and the Aperture MC. But before we move on to yet another cinematic adventure, let's give it to Caesar what is Caesar's and give it to Dre what is Dre's. Much obliged. We're also gonna be using some awesome and cost-effective accessories to mount our lights in creative ways. And the links for all of these items are gonna be in the descriptions below. When you use them to make a purchase, you'll be automatically, and most importantly, and no additional cost to you, be helping the growth of this channel. Because let's face it, the main condition 2010 Volkswagen Jetta sitting outside, it's not gonna pay for itself. Amen. Lastly, I feel it is my moral responsibility to give you a fair warning. You're about to enter a dimension where good taste, natural beauty, and proper exposure do not exist. I make no claims that I can guarantee neither your safety nor your sanity. If you choose to follow me there, do so at your own peril. You have been warned. Welcome to my kitchen. The first thing we're going to do is replace those three god awful lights up there with three Aperture B7Cs. Now you notice they are off right now, but this is what they look like in a side-by-side -side comparison. 
Now, if you notice on the GE side, the colors look less than accurate and there's some bending going on. And if you look at the aperture side, things look pretty good. Now, I find the B7C to be the most versatile out of the two aperture lights because the B7C can go into almost any household fixture with minimal rigging. Now, I say almost because despite having an E26 attachment, the bulb won't fit into every single fixture due to its size. By now, some of you may have already realized that I'm using other lights to make this room look like it's not being lit. It's not dishonest, it's just that without it, you wouldn't be able to see anything. Here, let me uh, 86 some of the lights I'm using this far so you have an idea. See? Oh, you don't. Exactly. Now, let's flip the switch. Huh? Huh? Pretty good, right? Once the B7Cs detect the current, each bulb will turn on and automatically connect to status link, Aperture's app. With the app, we can group all B7Cs together so they can act as one fixture. Hey, remember when we had the high-end electrician just for this? Now, critics would say that these are much less powerful than household LEDs. And they'd be right. But the color they produce is beautiful and truly what I would call cinema grade. They also don't have any flickering or bending often found in cheap LEDs, even when filming at high shutter angles. The output of the B7C and the MC is almost the same. The color accuracy and overall quality are fantastic on both. The pricing is somewhat comparable too. You can get a single MC for $90 and each B7C will set you back about 70 bucks. So, if you can only get one or the other, Think about your use case and then pull the trigger. At the end of the day, you'll need more than just accurate colors and zero flickering to make a scene look good. As you can see, the overheads are bringing the levels up in this room, but this shot is far from cinematic, right? I think I'm gonna need a much larger RGB key light. And luckily, I have just the thing. Wow, this looks good already. See, although the setup won't give us anywhere near close the same output as the Aperture P300C, we still get this wonderful soft light, full RGB color with the grid, and total status link control for a fraction of the cost. If you want to go even cheaper, you could use two of these lamp holders behind the diffuser of a 501 reflector. You save some money, but be ready to deal with lots of spill and much less output. Our weapon of choice is going to be the Sony A6400 with none other than the legendary Sigma 18-35 f1.8. Now the camera is set to Cine 2 color mode still, that way I can apply the proper limiting LUTs after I finish editing everything. And we also have the NTG5 about this far away from me. Now is this here because I want to show you the mic or did I forget to uh, take it out of the video? You never know. To create even more subject separation, we're going to be using two Aperture MCs behind me and to the right, magnetically connected to the world's most expensive light stand. Or, how I like to call it, the cheapest refrigerator money can buy. We'll also use a bit of black wrap to minimize some of the spill so we can better control the wall behind me. If you don't have any metal surfaces around, these wall plates can be used to magnetically hold up to two Aperture MCs. Then you can attach the plate to a C-stand or a normal light stand with one of these adapters. Okay, so now that we have 
all the lights set up, we're going to start to shape the scene a little bit and work with the levels. Um, so let's see if I go to Citus Link. I also like to have the um, the levels of the um, room lower a little bit. So we're going to go into the overheads. I'm going to dramatically lower that. And that gives me a little bit of separation, I think. And we're going to go to DMCs again. See how that goes away? I like that. And then going to softbox. Softbox already at um, 100%. So this is with the softbox off. And now with the softbox on. One of the things I didn't tell you guys is that I have only four B7Cs into the box, but uh, this box can take up to five, which, believe it or not, makes a little bit of a difference. Huh. Okay, here's the thing we're going to do. We're going to add some color. Yeah. Since we don't need those overheads that much. Check exposure. Yeah, it looks like we exposed pretty well. I, I, you know, the background is a little darker. Let's fix that. So go back to overheads again, and then Give a little bit of that. And how we're looking. Yeah, so we got a little bit of a little bit of a color splash going on here. But so for me, I think this looks good, and we definitely get exposure with all these smaller lights. But if you don't like this look, then we can also use this look, or this, or even this. The point is, RGB is here to stay and they can make your night or day go much smoother. And although I don't think these lights can replace gels, they can do almost everything the gels can do, plus they have special effects. The only special effects that gels have is that they can catch fire once in a while. But that's it. I'm Andre Correa, this was Andre Correa now, and I'll I found him. No, what? Go ahead with the plan. Andre Korea now. More like Andre Korea never. Ha ha ha. Ha 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 